the third quantum number has a symbol of lowercase m, subscript, and then L. And this is the often known as the magnetic quantum number. And this m sub L value goes from negative L through the origin to positive L. Mathematically, that looks a little hairy at first, but really, once you do this a couple of times, you go, I got it. If L is equal to 0, and let me make a little reminder here, we have ourselves a spherical orbital, or what we call an s orbital. If L is equal to 0, the values that m sub L equal go from negative 0 through 0 to positive 0. All said and done, it's telling us that m sub L is forced to be 0. Now, the 0 is significant in that we have one value. I'll underline the one value. And that tells us that we have one occurrence of the spherical orbital. So we have one spherical orbital at this level. When L is equal to 1, sorry about that. When L is equal to 1, we have ourselves the peanuts, known as the p orbital. And there are three values for m sub L. m sub L goes from negative L to positive L, so it goes from negative 1 to positive 1 with all things in between, the 0. So what we have is negative L, positive L, these are 1's, so the zeros in between. We have three occurrences, which is telling us that we have three of the peanut orbitals. These peanut orbitals are surrounding the nucleus, so the nucleus is between the red and the yellow ball for this little model. I'm supposed to be able to take this and just cram it so that it overlays with that. So you can imagine that there's a lobe coming out in front and a lobe coming out in back. And then there's one more set, so a total of three. And I'm supposed to be able to cram this right in that region of space, showing that there's a lobe going up and down. So there are six lobes, left, right, front, back, top, bottom, all around the nucleus. And that's where the electrons are <laughs> destined to be, in these peanut orbitals where L is 1, there it is. Let's do one more. If L is equal to 2, and would you please come up with the five values for M sub L? M sub L goes from negative 2 to positive 2 with whole numbers in between. So we have ourselves five different values, and these are the five d orbitals. They are the butterflies, the dragonflies, the four-leaf clovers, there are four of them that look that way. One, two, three, four, and then the fifth one. Let's see, finish up the notes and go ahead and label this dragonfly or the d orbitals. These quantum numbers give rise to an energy level diagram. We often call it an electron configuration diagram. The way that it operates is, the first number, 1's, 2's, and 3's, are the principal quantum numbers, or n. And you are free to put notes on this and write like a little arrow going n is equal to 1, n is equal to 2, n is equal to 3. And I put some dots out here going, it's just going to keep going. We didn't even put the d orbitals on this mini diagram. The s, a spherical orbital, spherical, peanut, spherical, peanut, and then those dragonflies and so on and so forth. It turns out that there's a fourth quantum number. I'll go up over to the right side here and go number four, and it's the spin. And an electron can have a spin up or a spin down. We usually represent this by saying m sub s can equal one half or negative one half to indicate one spin and the other spin. The consequence of this is we can have an electron, and now we're going to denote electrons by arrows, with spin up, we can have an electron with spin down, each one of these regions of space, this is a small spherical orbital, can house two electrons. These electrons will be opposite spin. So I'm putting one electron into this whole figure, and I'm telling people this is a hydrogen atom. The reason it's a hydrogen atom is because hydrogen has one electron. The electron would be expected to be found in the lowest energy orbital, and it's a 1s, or a small spherical orbital. If we said, hey, Forget the hydrogen atom and do a helium atom. Helium's element number two, it's got two electrons. One electron here, 
another electron here, but with opposite spin. So helium has two electrons, and they will both be found inside the small spherical orbital, or the 1s orbital. When we go to the periodic table and start over again, meaning we go hydrogen, helium, and then we drop down a row, what's going to happen with that row is that we're going to start a new principal quantum number. So we're going to go from 1 to 2. Lithium is element number 3. Lithium. Lithium has two electrons in a 1s orbital and one electron in a little bit larger spherical shaped orbital we call the 2s orbital. Beryllium has four electrons, two and two. We can keep going. I'm going to stop at an extremely important element. Carbon has six electrons. Two in the 1s, two in the 2s, and two that are in the peanut orbitals. I followed a little rule here. I separated them because we can think that Electrons, being negatively charged, would rather spread out. So perhaps one of them is in the orbital that we would hold and say it's left to right. And then another electron would be like front to back. It turns out that it's lower in energy, and we observe this, that the electrons would have the same spin in separate orbitals. If we go up one more, we're at element number seven or nitrogen, and nitrogen has half of the two P's filled, and that offers a little bit of stability. They'd all have the same spin. If we go ahead and put in another electron, we're at element number eight, two, four, six, seven, eight, oxygen. We are forced to pair up the electrons. Electrons in that same peanut orbital would have opposite spins, so this could represent an oxygen atom. We know about fluorine. Fluorine's element number nine, and it's extremely reactive. And we're going to find out shortly in our next discussions that fluorine's extremely reactive because this is going to be quite stable if it gets filled up and it obtains another electron. And that's the personality, or that's the behavior of fluorine. It likes to gain one more electron and become F minus. Would you please move ahead and fill up a diagram for, mm, let's go with magnesium. According to the periodic table of the elements, magnesium has 12 electrons, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. If I pause here for a moment, I can say this is neon, the inert gas, neon. And neon has, well, everything filled up for principal quantum number 1 and 2. And that offers great stability. We're talking about an inert gas. Magnesium has two additional electrons. They're going to fill up the 3s orbital. Magnesium likes to get rid of two electrons when it's brought in the presence of a metal. So it would be these two electrons that would leave. So this is now explaining the behavior of metals and nonmetals.